started in just a couple minutes. Hi, Belinda. Trying to figure out this, you know, reading the comments and just figuring out the whole live situation. Never done it and did a practice one, but there were no viewers, so nobody was commenting for me to see how it was working. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to be here too. We'll do about one or two more minutes. Hi, Jana, Oklahoma. Oh, thanks, Belinda. <laughs> well I'll just get started um, for those who don't know my name is Julia Schwery and I am one of ThermoWeb's educational fabric team members um, I also help moderate this Facebook page um, and today I'm going to share with you what I do and how I prepare my heat and bond scraps so I'm going to move over to the other screen. You see I'm in my little tiny screen here. That's for when I do any sewing, just so that you have something to look at. And you can see my face and I can answer your questions. Um, so yeah, let's go over to the other screen. All right, so I'm, I'm here now. Um, These are just two examples that I have that show you what you can do with some of your heat and bond scraps. But before we get to that, I am going to share with you how I prepare them. So a lot of times when I make a project using heat and bond, and the heat and bond I'm referring to would be either your ultra hold, your easy print light, or your feather light. Um, and when I'm creating a project, I tend to have extras. Um, either I'll cut out something big because I don't know what I'm doing with it and I save it for later, or um, I use it for, um, what are they called? Die cutting machines. And those require specific sizes and not so easily cut out with scissors. So before we get to that, um, so I've, there's three different types here and it's very important if you are keeping your scraps to keep these separate. So your ultra hold, I keep those in a separate bin right here. Um, these I keep separate because these are a no sew. Um, you typically don't want to sew through this. It will gum up your needles. It doesn't need to be sewn. It holds great. Um, but we are not going to work with this tonight. I am going to work with either one of these. Honestly, I have a whole bucket full. I couldn't tell you which one is which in here. But these two I keep in the same bin because both of these require sewing. Um, your heat and bond light is a little bit, uh, has a better uh, bond than your feather light. Um, but your feather light is great for layers. I recently did a project and had like six layers of fabric that I was easily able to sew through um, and it, I bonded it everything with the feather light. Um, so either one of these is in my bin here which I left fully uncut for your viewing pleasure. Um, I'm going to cut some and show you kind of what I do and yeah so a lot of times like I said I use a die cutter and the die cutter leaves these big tails, especially if you can see I used a large circle. And for me, I honestly, I hate throwing this away. There's a lot of material to work with here. Um, so we are going to cut some of this up and I'll show you how I do that. And here is my lovely bin that I keep them all in. So here's a few pre-cut items. So I don't typically keep anything under a quarter of an inch. So I just trim it away 
And another thing I like to do just to prepare myself so that I don't have to do it later is anywhere you see fabric. I cut that out that way. I know the pieces I'm working with are completely covered in the heat and bond material and I don't have to worry about that later. And then I honestly, I just throw them in there. So I'm going to cut, I'm actually the project I'm going to make to with you tonight is going to include some of this white kind of off white color. So I'm going to cut a few of these for you. There is a little bit right here. And since I have a different screen, if you're asking any questions, I'm sure um, the other Julia would be great to answer them for you. I will be back to my other screen to take a little break and see if there's any questions and comments. Um, yeah, but Like I said, I wanted the dual screen because with sewing, everything is done uh, all over the place. So. Some other items that I have that you may have that use heat and bond are applique letters, and those leave a good amount as well. And since this is a little bit over a quarter of an inch, I'm actually just gonna keep it. I won't, I won't cut all night for you. I'm just cutting a few things. And uh, sometimes, like I said, I, I overestimate and I just cover a whole bunch of fabric and those can go in here too. And actually for tonight's project, I have this big scrap. I don't know what this was for, honestly. And then I keep, I keep all the material that's not covered as well because those can be turned into two and a half inch squares or even three and a half inch squares. Um, but for tonight, I am gonna use a little bit of this gray. So I will cut it out for us. In this bin, usually I keep the bigger items towards the bottom. And a lot of times I even keep, if you'll notice, I have heat and bond scraps that actually haven't even been bonded yet, but they were pieces that were on those easy print sheets that I didn't want to adhere to fabric right away. So I keep them in the bottom. So if I need something small, I have a place where they are. And I keep them based on the type of heat and bond that they are. And as you can see, I use a lot of heat and bond light as compared to heat and bond ultra. So I'm going to find, go through this big old mess. Um, a lot of these scraps, some you might recognize if you've been following any of the projects that I have done in the past. These are from, this project here was from my donut quilt that I did back in April or May last year. And that, there's actually a tutorial that shows you how to use these heat and bond light or any, really any heat and bond product with like, it's called like a window applique. So you actually use less material. And there's a, there's actually a video on ThermalWeb's YouTube page that you can check that out if you're like me and don't wanna have a ton of scraps. Um, What's really nice about that tutorial is it allows for your, whatever you're making. In my case, it was a quilt. I wanted it to be soft and cuddly, and I actually currently do sleep with it on my bed because it's got a minky back. Um, the, sometimes these materials, especially like the heat and bond light, more so the heat and bond ultra, you wouldn't want to use that, um, can make your projects a little stiffer. Um, and if you, don't want to put layer upon layer, you can do the window applique method. Now the heat and bond feather light would have been perfect and ideal for that quilt, but I used materials I had and I had a whole bolt of heat and bond light. So that is what I used. Look for one 
more color. We're going to go with Valentine's colors tonight. Um, just because the theme this week is Bake Me Happy and everything is amazingly Valentine themed and I love it. So let's get some of this white. It's a little bit different than that off white. And this one actually has snowflakes on it. Don't know where everybody's hailing from, but I'm here in the Midwest and it is cold and we had snow. Not as much as they predicted, but still had some snow. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, ideally is I should cut up everything as soon as I use it, but I get so excited and I just put it aside and I go right on to my next project. So, in a while or so, when I decide to clean my, my sewing area, I will go through and I will cut all those down and they will go in this box. All right, so, yeah, I have my little notes here. Um, <laughs> tell you the truth, I do um, painting tutorials. Like I teach, like if you've ever been to those wine and canvas nights, I do those in person, no problem. This is my first time doing like a Facebook Live and you think it would be easier since there's nobody really physically in front of me. Um, but, you know, it's okay. All right. So tonight, um, before I get on to our project, I'm going to take a break and get a drink of water and check if there's any comments and actually get my iron starting to heat up because I will need that and I didn't put it over here due to space. Um, and so we'll take a two minute little break iron all warm and toasty all right it's great to see everybody on Dawn, hi Pat, Carlita, that's, my, my daughter would love that name, if that's how you say it. All right, so the iron is heating up, and for the heat and bond light, um, you want to have it on a medium setting no steam and with the the iron you see in the video that one I actually I don't put any water in it I have a separate iron that I use for steam and a separate iron that I use for just heat only um, I have slightly hard water so I try to keep them separate I'm sure others can relate And uh, so we're going to get started. So I said I was going to use some Valentine's colors. And I needed one of these larger pieces for what my, my goal is for tonight. So I'm going to pull the items out that I want. So these are some other ones that I used with that donut quilt. So they've got that wavy look. look through what we got I love I love stripes anybody else out there loves stripes anything stripes is me stripey binding is my jam okay this is kind of big we can probably find one that's a little smaller there we go I don't want to waste that one for my idea what I'm using so I'm going to use a smaller one Pull out a few extras here and there. That should do it. Okay. Let's 
So just a real quick note too. So this, I made these prior to this event. Um, this is just a fun little, you could use it as like a little mug rug or anything you want really. But as you can see, it's a cupcake. And I use the scraps to make the different layers of icing with the cherry and a little spoon. Um, this is a different technique um, for if you don't wanna actually make an image with your scraps. You can just cut them out and put them down on any fabric and then sew right over them. Um, these I just did in a, in a cross hatch. This, the intended purpose, and I haven't finished it yet, is for a quilted postcard. So these are great scrap busters. You wanna make little postcards. Uh, what we're gonna make tonight, you'll see, is super cute. And, uh, so yeah, and uh, of course, since this week is Bake Me Happy, um, another thing, if you've been looking at any of the projects I do either for ThermaWeb or on my own blog, um, I love anything to do with food, sweets in general. So <laughs> I have a lot of things. So tonight our little pin cushion is going to be my sweet little donut and it's my favorite color yellow. So. Since we are doing Bake Me Happy, I am going to draw freehand. Um, we're going to do hot chocolate for this cold day, cold night, and a macaron cookie. So, I noticed when I was practicing earlier, I actually drew my mug. I'll show you an example. I'm going to read, I'm going to do everything on screen, but I drew my mug. And, can, and does anybody notice what looks so different about it? Is this is how I would pick my mug up, which is left-handed. So I'm going to draw a right-handed mug tonight. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're a lefty. So the background that I'm going to be using for this is about an 8 by 8 inch. So I want to make sure that it fits in there so we're going to just kind of freehand our mug doesn't have to be perfect mugs are not perfect especially if they're handcrafted so there we go there's a little mug and I'm going to cut that out I'm going to start with my large scissors and then work in with some smaller detailing scissors They can go back into our scrap bin and I'm going to gently kind of poke through that. It's a really small hole. These aren't my favorite little mini scissors. I can't find my gold ones. Does anybody have like a favorite mug that they drink their coffee, tea, or whatever out of? I do. You know, it's all about the feel in your hand. It has to have a certain feel. So there's our mug. Cute. And now this is actually pretty flat. Sometimes when the scraps, you know, have been in storage for a minute, they kind of get all wonky shaped. Um, you can easily, with your iron, just gently press them. Um, or I'm going to use pins just to kind of pin it down. But see, even that's not even... These have been since, you know, last April, so. So what I do is I take pins and I just kind of pin it down while I'm, while I'm growing it because a lot of times I use the piece to then draw off of. So we want frothy hot chocolate with lots of whipped cream. So what I'll do is then next take what piece I'm doing. And you can turn it over. 
and I layer it like right on top where I'm going to be overlapping it so I know where to cut. And my, my cream is going to actually kind of come down a little bit and then kind of come up and around. So this pin's in the way. So like that. And then I'll cut this out. Might be able to use this piece, but I'm gonna be safe and use a different one. So here, I'm actually gonna turn it this way because that flat part, maybe. So that's the thing is you just kind of have to work with it and play with it and see how you like it. So we're just gonna leave it at that until we get the next piece on and see if I wanna turn it around or if I wanna curve it anymore. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put like just a little piece of whip, you know, cause whipped cream when you, you use one of those can things, or even if you dollop it on, it kind of creates a nice little peak. So we're going to layer that right just over top of that again. I want to hit the iron with my hand. don't want to burn myself. <laughs> we're going to come this way, and we're going to give it a little swoop. Almost like how meringue looks, which is the kind of cookie we're going to be cutting out tonight as well. And then we'll cut this out as well. And I'm gonna walk through this entire process. I'm even going to do a quick quilt. Since it's just a small mug rug, we're gonna do a quick quilt. And I will show you how, um, how I bind it as well. For anybody who wants to see just a different binding technique, everyone has their own. I will show you mine. Yeah. And that's so cute. And then that just kind of sits right on top there. Push that pin in. All right. Now the cup to me is super plain. So that's what I pulled this fabric out for. I, going with the Valentine's theme, we're gonna put like a little heart. At this point too, if you have like a die cutting machine, you could cut out a heart with that or any other shape you want. Honestly, it's in your hands. You could use not a plain color fabric for your mug and it could be a decorated that way. I just wanted to go with, I knew my background was sort of busy. So to make sure that this popped off the page, I went with a solid, solid cup. So this looks good from the back, but sometimes from the front, that's cute. It's whimsical. And there's our little mug. Okay. So we will keep that there. And I'm going to move this out of the way. We are going to build... Oh, well, just kidding. Got to have the straw or the spoon. And it's got to be the stripes. As you can see, I've already had some practice with it. just adds some pizzazz. I wish I had straws this color. So, and once we iron it to our sheet, this will stick under there. All right, so how are we gonna make these cookies? And they're macaron cookies. They're kind of fancy. I have made them. Um, I enjoy baking as well as I do sewing. So it's a lot of fun. All right. So macaron cookie has kind of like that oval top and oval bottom and like a cream in the center. So we're, this is like the perfect shape. It already has that arch. That's what makes it so nice. So, um, and that 
that orange actually might be too big. So we're actually going to go with the bottom. And kind of curve it up. And we need two of these. So we're, cause we're going to need two, the top and the bottom cookie. So I'm actually going to cut this one out and use it as a visual for my other one. And I would love in the comments to be able to read back later if there's any products that you are curious about and would like to see a live for. I'll be doing another one in February. Um, excuse me. <coughs> um, I was really interested in possibly doing, if you've heard of liquid vinyl, that is a really fun product. So if that's an interest, I'd love to see it in the comments. Or if there is something else, a different product, let me know. I am here for you and what you want to do. So actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to use this as, like I said, a template. I wonder if I can fit it. See, I can fit it right in there to try to use up as much of this as possible. I'm using kind of big scissors for this, but those other ones aren't as sharp as I would prefer them to be. There we go. All right, so we've got the top of our cookie and the bottom. Actually, we might switch them because the bottom is going to be partially covered by cream, so it's going to look smaller anyway, and the top will not be, will be covering the cream. And that's what I got out this, this actually has snowflakes on it. It's a white on white. It's really pretty. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so. All right, so let me measure. The cream is going to kind of come out on either side just slightly. So I want to make sure I can... And this I am just going to free. So one side doesn't have to be wavy, but the other side that's going to show, we're going to give it like a little cream wave like it was squeezed out. There we go. And we'll see. That might be too long, but it's better to cut it long than short. Almost there. We're going to trim off just a little bit on each side. There we go. Oh, that's so perfect. It looks delicious. I've never made any pink ones. I've made lemon and I've made orange and lime macarons before. So there's our cute little applique. Our iron is plenty well hot now. So I'm going to remove the pins and set these aside and we will adhere it to our fabric. So just a little bit on this fabric. This is Riley Blake and it's from their Mint For You collection. It is adorable, especially if you like conversation hearts. Um, this is the same fabric I used to make the Tic-Tac-Toe and Checkers board game, which was recently published on the blog. It is a great project for a gift, especially for young ones. I have a four-year-old and she loves to play the Tic-Tac-Toe. So, like I said, this piece right here is about eight by eight inches. Uh, probably trim it down. We'll see. Just kind of, you know, with if you've done any quilting, sometimes things kind of 
shift, but we're actually going to be using some more scraps because that is the theme tonight. We're actually going to be using scrapped heat and bond or fusible fleece, but I will show you that in a little bit. So actually I want to find the center. I'm just going to kind of put a little crease so I know where the center is. And the fabric is directional, so we've got it the right way. So here's our center. And I actually cut the mug out left-handed again, didn't I? <laughs> I'm looking at that like I did something wrong. I cut it out. I drew it right-handed, but it is meant for a left-hander. We're going to go with it. So first thing we'll do is we'll adhere. We'll at least get this down. I think a lot of times I will get a ruler or two and uh, make sure it's center. Being precise here. About one quarter. One quarter. So actually, you can move it over just slightly. One and a quarter on each side, approximately. So. So I'm actually just going to put the bottom of the cookie because it's layered and the bottom of the cookie is underneath the cream layer. And I think I like that. I think, I think once I put these on too, the top and bottom will be pretty. It's about two inches just slightly, but that's going to come down. So that's going to be about right. So before I get to those layers, I'm going to give it a nice press. To make sure those adhere. All right. And then we can start adding our layers. So now this one's got to go under a few. So before we forget about that one, let's do the cream because it's going to go under both of those. So the nice thing is these peel right off. Place that. Oh, it keeps sticking to my fingers. And that one. But before we press that down, we're going to put our little straw in there or spoon, whatever you want it to be. Or it could be one of those, um, one of those cookies or those chocolates. I don't forget what they're called, but you can stick down. So I think that's about right. I'm just going to hold it while I first I get that. And my fabric is a little see-through, but that's okay. All right, we'll do the heart. Just kind of looks like it's going right through the whipped cream. And we'll put the cream and the other cookie on it at the same time. This is our last step for fusing. Up next, we're going to sandwich our layers and do a quick quilt. And while I'm quilting, I can look at any feed and I'm gonna talk about our 
block of the month that we offer. If you're new to here, you will learn a little bit about that. How cute is that? All right. So I don't know about you, but in as well as all of these scraps, I am always left with lots of other scraps. <laughs> this is fusible fleece. So we are going to actually just be puzzle piecing it together on the back. If you don't have fusible fleece, but you want to use scraps of say, batting or some um, sewing fleece, something that we stitch, uh, Thermoweb has this product here and I've used it and it works great. It's an easy seam tape. You essentially cut your two pieces and you bond the tape literally on that seam. And that's it. It's really nice. Um, but since we're using fusible, we don't need this tonight. But I just wanted to share that. It is an option. So we're going to turn this over and we're going to make a puzzle. The best puzzle possible. And I don't like to overlap them. So that's why they're all that's why I cut them straight before we started. Now, if this was a big project, I would advise possibly not piecing, but we're just making a little mug rug, something that's going to go on my kitchen table to hold my coffee because I am not actually I am not a hot chocolate drinker. So there's that. I think this might be good right here. Might overlap just slightly. This is my thickest one, so that I have out. Use our medium heat stain again and press that on there. I like to turn it over the adhesive is actually on the side that this gets the best heat. Let's check it. Seems to be bonded. All right. So then we're going to base their backing. And once again, I'm using fabric from the same line and I made it, of course, much bigger. And to base that, we're actually gonna use another product, basting adhesive, this is amazing. Um, I always used to pin baste, no more. Will I ever pin baste? This stuff is amazing. So we're gonna use this on here. This is amazing for big quilts too, like I said. I used to pin baste and it was a nightmare. I'd get puckers and everything. So this is small, so we really don't need a lot to hold it in place because it's maneuverable within the hands versus a big quilt. So I'm just going to trim off that excess. All right. So we are gonna 
take a break from this camera screen. I'm going to actually just quickly, I'm going to do just some wavy line sewing and make sure I cover each piece of this applique. Um, you could go around and do like a blanket stitch or a zigzag or even, you know, the scribbling types of stitches with a straight stitch. Um, but we're just going to do the wavy lines tonight and I'll see you over in the other screen. take a look at my screen so I can get the move that down there we go now you can see what I'm doing and I forgot to pull it out I want to make sure my lines are straight and even so I'm not sure how loud this is so I apologize if it's loud they the volume is over on the phone, which is a few feet away. So hopefully it's not too bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we're going to start kind of dead center. Now you'll notice in the background of the tiny little picture, you'll notice, um, that teddy bear. That is one of the free quilt blocks you can get on the block of the month for the craft room. It started back in August, so we've got all the way back to August last year of quilt blocks. And each block is typically, typically uh, traditionally sewn. Um, that's my preference but sometimes there are there has been a paper pieced one um, all the other ones have been traditionally sewn I have yet to do an applique one but um, that is in the future for those people who love to applique um, so yeah this is the very love me block very lovely block there is the blanket and then uh, just posted today on the blog is the additional uh, requirements to make an 18 inch pillow that is not in the original file on the Facebook page. Just got a few more passes on this side and then probably about actually I'm done with that side so Sometimes the block of the month, the block is actually used in the corresponding project. Sometimes it's just a bonus block for your pleasure, and the project is something different entirely. Um, it just varies month to month.
one, I'm going to do one thing. I want to go around the heart. The stitching I did didn't quite hit it. We are almost through. All that's left to do is trim and we're going to add the binding. I think I'm actually going to turn the iron off too. Because believe it or not, I don't actually iron my binding strips. That's one of my, that's kind of my technique. I'm sure other people have the same one. So here it is. I went around the heart. Just wanted to have it pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is, this stayed pretty square, so I'm just going to use my scissors to trim it. If it was really wonky, I would definitely use my rotary cutter and mat. But that's one thing I love about the fusible fleece is I've noticed I don't get much wonkiness from it. Because it's, well, it's fused to the fabric, so there's no shifting. All right, so to finish this up, of course, I'm going to use some more fabric from the Mint For You line. This is what I was talking about, the little conversation hearts. This is adorable. So when I do my binding, and luckily this piece is so small, all I needed one was one with the fabric. My binding, everybody has their preference, but mine is two inches wide. One, two. And the way I do it is I start usually just like a lot of people, I start on a side and I sew down. What I do though is I don't, I used to go off the corner, but now instead of going off the corner, I sew down. And then what I'll do on the machine, which you'll see, is I'm going to fold this over like so and it's still on my machine. My needle is still still down. I haven't taken it off. And then I fold this back over like so. And I like to kind of make, I kind of press little creases. And then one more time, I fold this down. And you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see from that distance, there is a little crease right here. That is essentially your quarter inch. So I will keep sewing until I hit that crease. And if you're interested, I can make a skills tutorial of anybody. Raise your hand in the feed if anybody's interested. I will make a skills tutorial video on this. And so then once you get to here, 
this is where you will then your needle is still down you pivot in your sewing machine and then this is where you'll lift your needle you lift your needle up and you fold this back and you know you've gone too far if you see stitching on this side but you fold this back and then you put your needle straight back down right where it was and then I do back stitching you can do back stitching here and you continue on down the line and you repeat the process coming down to here before getting too close you fold it and I fold it to where that line meets the edge right there fold it over again and fold it again so I'm gonna go stitch that on And I didn't mention, I go from the back. So I sew my binding on the back first. So that, and I'm a machine binder. I used to hand stitch bind. That's actually how I was taught in school. So that's what I did until I found out I prefer machine binding. sure my machine you can see my machine in the video it's kind of really bright it's kind of hard to see I'm sorry about that so before I get too far that's when I fold that over keeping my needle in I pivot my foot is still up. I lift my needle and I push that through. Lower my foot, lower my needle. Before I get too close to the end, same thing. This point two is where I would put a little tag on. If I'm given as a gift or something. And if you are interested, I do have my own Instagram. Um, it is Inflorescence Designs. However, it is spelled differently, unfortunately. I don't know if I misspelled it when I was doing it or if I had to misspell it because it was already taken. I, can't, I don't remember. It's been years. Um, all those links are actually found on my blog, which is the correct spelling in fluorescencedesigns.com. You will find, you can find all the Thermaway projects, links to them. If you, you know, just want to look at, you know, fabric projects, I have direct links to these. So there's sometimes it takes a while to go through the search because Thermaway has awesome designers and we are constantly making new things for everyone. But if you know, Hey, I remember Julia had an awesome project. You can go to my blog, type it in. It'll take you directly to that link to ThermoWeb's page. All right, I'm on the last round before I join them. So I, I usually sew just partially down. My back stitch, and then I, this is where I do cut it off, and I need a pair of scissors. You can't really see what I'm doing. I'll bring it over to the other computer screen. So I've gone all the way around. You can see my corners and those, see those will beautifully 
turn out to mitered corners. Um, but before we get to that, I do have to connect these. I have not, I've seen it done. I just have not practiced it myself how to make the angled cut here yet. So I am, that is something I'm gonna do. Uh, I've tried it a long time ago and failed miserably. So right now I'm still just going to use a straight seam. And what I'm gonna do is go back. I'm gonna stitch these together and then stitch down. And it's back. So like I showed before, what I, how I did it, created these nice mitered corners. And you can pull out your iron here if you'd like. I typically do not. Um, I then will, <clears throat> excuse me, I fold this in. The, and because of how I do the two inches, this is why I like two inches. I only have to fold it directly based on where I stitched which is a 3 8 inch of seam. And here, I fold that in once, right to the edge, and then it folds over. And it just goes over that line so that when I stitch it, it shouldn't be showing. It's like that. And then you get to your corners, and when I get to my corners, I always do the the side I'm not sewing so I will bring this so this will be starting to sew it'll be about right there ready to go and then I take this one and I fold it down to that edge fold it back over get that little string out of there and then I push it into the corner and I make the mitered corner in the front like that so let me just stitch this up real quick and I'll be back. to the last one.
throw the iron back on for a second. I want to give it a little press just to finish it off. But here it is. Fancy little Valentine mug rug. I can see myself making this in literally every color. I have a weird um, obsession when I decorate anything. Um, I like things that are easily changeable. So <clears throat> to me, a mug like this, I can make another one with a clover or a sunshine or anything and just change up the colors. That's how my decorating my house is. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I appreciate uh, you sticking around and watching. I had fun. Um, and yeah, hope you learned something new or, and like I said, in the comments, if there's a product you're interested in seeing used, if you've never used it before, let me know. Um, I have a fun project coming in February that might be fun for a live, but I just want to see what everybody wants. Cause I'm here for you. Um, so anyway, thanks till next time. See ya.